when we have a smooth connection with him. Let's bring you uh, that update from our National Assembly correspondent, Jokhe Adesan. An attendant political unrest that followed the unceremonious announcement of the June 12, 1993 presidential election by then head of state, Ibrahim Babangida, threw up many heroes and villains. And I need not to repeat it here. Student activists, lawyers, and human rights activists paid dearly for a just cause. Human rights lawyer Gani Fawaimi, a financier of the National Democratic Coalition, Nadeko Alfred Rewani, former military governor of Imo State, Ndubuse Khan, and the late Pa Ayo Adesoya are some of the names that readily come to mind. The list is indeed endless. Among the living heroes of democracy are Nigeria's number one citizen, Bola Tinumbu, who was forced on self exile. Human rights lawyer Femi Falano, a Feni Ferry chieftain, Ayo Adebanjo, Civil rights activist and lawyer Ayobe, a former member of the Senate, Sheo Sani, and numerous student union leaders. No, but that, I've just told you. One of them is Ezenwa Nwago. Mr. Nwago was the vice president of the National Association of Nigerian Students in 1993. Along with other union leaders, he spearheaded student revolution against perceived injustice characterized by the annulment of a credible election. I'm really happy. Ezewa Uwago, along with 33 um, other union leaders, so suffered no less than 11 incarceration before they were expelled. Mr. Uwago and his colleagues owed their return to the Lagos State University to late Gani Fawaimi and Femi Falano. Several union leaders are not that lucky. Many have been unable to pick up the pieces of their lives thereafter sitting with him to recount the struggle for the validation of the annulled June 12, 1993 presidential election brings back memories of a Trojan. He says there is the need for the current administration to institute a wellness center where the scarce of that time can be healed. We lost our studentship in Lasso because of June 12. Our school was closed down for 18 months because of June 12, we are pasting, we are the ones pasting posters in the late of the night in, 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 in Lagos, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in Lagos mainland, and will be chased by the police and army. It is his belief that Nigeria's return to the old national anthem was well thought out. He recounts it was one of the many recommendations of the Akabash on led Sovereign National Conference way back 2014. Mr. Nwagu believes if well taken, it will heal the wounds of June 12, and foster unity. The national anthem is not just is not just a song. It should have meaning. It should have content. And if you look at this this new national anthem now, the one that we just reinstated, it has deeper content. It has deeper meaning. Acclaimed human rights lawyer Femi Falano is another living hero of the June 12 struggle. Mr. Falano speaks on the reminiscences of June 12 as he recounts his many travels. Over 200 protesters were killed in Lagos when the army rolled out the tanks. Uh, many of us were detained regularly uh, during the struggle against the military. We were charged with various offenses, uh, including treasonable felony. Uh, even though one was uh, charged for various offenses, uh, I was not convicted, you know. And so, uh, but we're not deterred in the demand for the validation of the June 12th election. 25 years of Nigeria's return to democracy, Mr. Falano speaks on the lessons learned. Lessons to draw from the criminal annulment and its uh, uh, aftermath is that uh, Nigerians must learn to uh, make sacrifice or sacrifices. For instance, the symbol of that struggle, the winner of the election, Bashar M. Kabila, in spite of his uh, uh, prosperity, uh, decided to pay the supreme sacrifice. You know, he has his voice to the clamor for healing, as recommended by the Chuku Difu Puta panel. To further deepen the nation's democracy. The Euro speak on the need for the expansion of the frontiers of freedom, the canvas free legislature, free media, free judiciary, independent candidacy, improved party system, and increased value for a fledgling democracy. Jokeyatsa.
TVC News, Abuja. The question remains that if the heroes of this country who fought for democracy, some of them who even lost their lives, if they were going to be looking back on us smiling with a sense of fulfillment or achievement, mm -hmm. or it's going to be <clears throat> otherwise, especially when you consider the basic elements of democracy that include fundamental human rights, uh, separation of powers, free and fair election, um, you know, the ability to leave the north to the south or the other way around, establish businesses mm -hmm. and live peacefully amongst people. Uh, some would say that we've made some tremendous progress, but we're not where we should be as a country. Uh, the interesting part for me is the fact that irrespective of all the challenges that we've faced uh, politically, economically, we still come out every four years mm. to vote, elect new leaders, and we don't seem to play with the indivisibility of the Nigerian nation. Mm. Absolutely. And uh, this is also because, I mean, when they say that uh, democracy is a journey and not a destination, mm. we've made mistakes over the years. And it's also very important to note that we continue to correct these mistakes. Earlier, I asked the prophet question. I asked him... Uh, whether or not he thought that the activists who were key figures of the June 12th struggle should have gone into politics and mm -hmm. if that would in any way uh, set the tone for governance in our Absolutely. country. Because I think most of them actually think mm. that if they had gone into politics and succeeded, it may have um, had, it would have had an impact on how governors in Nigeria uh, turned out. Absolutely. And the good thing is that we now have a president who himself was part of those who mm. fought for this democracy. He understands mm. what they went through. Some of them were in exile. Some of them weren't as lucky. They, they exited this world. Mm. So they, this, this administration cannot play with the you know, hard-fought democracy. And I think it, they also carry so much burden in that regard to be able to perform. Let's um, attempt to reconnect with Yerima Shatima, who is President Arawa. Youth Consultative Forum. Mr. Shatima, good evening. Happy Democracy Day to you. Good evening, my dear brother. Good evening, viewers and listeners. What's the feeler like in the North, particularly among young people 31 years after June 12, 1993? Well, the feeling is that at some point, some of us that are product of struggle to an extent. Uh, I've always uh, have this at the back of our mind that uh, there was an election that was held say, 21 years ago when we were far younger and that election was free and fairest and at the same time the military then annulled the election and subsequently a lot of things happened and some of us had no choice when we were students we joined the struggle and uh, we continue doing it till date. Some of us you? would have expected that by now, despite all the hurdles, all the struggle, by now would have begun to feel better. But very unfortunately, very sadly, situation still remain, or rather becoming worse by the day. Problem continue to plummet. So it's sad and disappointing. And that's just the general expression so far. We're going to get to the problem shortly, but everyone is talking about how well we've fared holding on to this democracy for 25 years. Um, what, do you, what, what factors do you think would have been responsible, and do you think it's something worth celebrating? Well, it was celebrating. You look at it in two angles. One is uh, we are glad that today we are 25 years uh, without any interruption or any intervention from the military. That's one plus. Uh, then the other one is that the dividend of the democracy is what we have not really gotten. And often we keep complaining from one trouble to another, from one government to another, and things have not been well. So it's quite disturbing. But the beauty of it is that some of us still remain optimistic, believing that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And that's the, but also we still have at the back of our mind that the battle is not yet over until it's over. So it's not yet Uhuru. We will still remain on the transit until we get exactly what we want and the kind of democracy that we can all be proud of.
and maybe probably in the course of what we're doing in our belief, in our course, we'll get to Eldorado. That's just it. Hold that thought for a minute. 